Hello, welcome to The Destructibles, a podcast by ADHDers for ADHDers, talking about ADHD tips, tricks, and hacks to get through your daily life. My name's Marie, I'm your co-host. I'm also the founder of Llama Life, which is a productivity tool designed for ADHDers. And I'm here with my friend, Jesse J. Anderson. Hey, I'm Jesse. I'm the author of Extra Focus, the quick start guide to adult ADHD, as well as the weekly newsletter also called Extra Focus. And today we're here with our friend Izzy Chia, also known as La Neuro Picante on Instagram and other social platforms. Izzy and I have known each other for a while. We met through Instagram. So she's a digital content creator, ADHD, of course, an accountability coach, a neurodiversity advocate, a blogger, and so many more things. Hey, Izzy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, cool. That was a, a lovely intro. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> no I feel worries. like so many uh, of us ADHDers, our title or whatever, is it just keeps on going. We just keep <laughs> yeah. adding more words to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about time management and to-do lists and some tips and tricks we have around that. But I guess before we get to that topic, Izzy, could you tell us maybe just a little bit more about yourself, your relationship with ADHD? Sure. We'll I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah. So I am a late diagnosed Latina. I live in the great state of Texas and I've had my ADHD diagnosis. I think this October will be my third anniversary of being diagnosed officially with ADHD. It was a really interesting road to get there filled with burnout and um, lots of misunderstanding about what was going on with my mental health. But it led me to the clarity that I've received with my diagnosis and just finding community online with more ADHDers has really opened my world and my door to job opportunities and ways to express myself creatively and uh, relate to a whole host of people. Now, I think it's almost 120,000 people, which is crazy. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's so, crazy. I think the thing yeah. I love the most about what you just said is the community part. Yeah. Jesse and I were just talking about this in our last episode as well, just how reassuring and special it is to find a community of ADHDers. It makes so much difference. It has to me as well. Just the conversations that we have are just different and I just feel so understood. Like I don't even think about it and just say stuff that I normally wouldn't say and it's just, yeah, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, it really helps to know that you have at least somebody on the other end of Instagram or whatever platform you're on that isn't judging you and that really feels and understands what you're going through. And you feel a little bit, you feel like you have more of an opportunity to unmask and show your true self, right? All the mm -hmm. weirdness and silliness <laughs> that goes along with it, right? Because we know on the other end, like, they get it, right? And you feel okay <laughs> being able to be yourself, which mm -hmm. is such a gift in this <laughs> crazy world that we live in. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think cl classic example was just this morning, even because it's ironic, because we're talking about time management today. And you know, I was late to this podcast by a couple of minutes. And I'm the host of the podcast for the platform that we're recording on. And yeah, it's just one of those things where I set an alarm and Normally I snooze it for half an hour, but I actually, not to wake up, just an alarm for this podcast. And I normally snooze it and snooze it. But today I was like, no, I got it. I got this. And I turned it off. <laughs> it's like the age old mistake. You know, it's like, I got this. My brain's good today. It's nope. <laughs> Don't, yeah, yeah. I'm so bad at that. I feel like I do that all the time where I... I convince myself that somehow for this one thing, I'm magically not going to have ADHD anymore and I'm just going to remember the thing and suddenly I'm going to be able to track the minutes of time or whatever. I think I'm like eight years in for my diagnosis now and I've read so much stuff that tells me like, it's not going away. What are you doing? Why do you keep tricking yourself into thinking that somehow this one time like, oh, I'm going to remember this one because it's important. Like that importance hasn't mattered for a lot of really important things in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just need to, I just need to remember that. I, yeah, I do that all the time too, which is why like I have, um, I know you, Maria, also use the Do app, D-U-E, oh, yeah. uh, for like reminders. Yeah, and I'm yeah, yeah. very selective for what I add to that app because 
if I add too many things to it, I'll do that. I'll just be like, oh yeah, I'll remember that. And market is done. And then it all falls apart. So I have three things on it. And my one rule is even if I'm in the middle of doing it, don't mark it done. Just keep snoozing it so that it doesn't mm -hmm. go away until yep. I'm literally like, if it's taken out the garbage, which is one of my <laughs> weekly ones, it's like mm -hmm. the garbage cans are out on the street and I'm back in the house and the garage door is closed. Then I can yeah. mark it as done. Otherwise you mm -hmm, just keep mm -hmm. snoozing it so that you don't leave the yep. task half undone or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Th that's exactly what I do as well. Like I'm very normally, not this morning, but <laughs> normally, normally right. I'm like, yeah, don't, don't hit that button until you are fully done. Even if you're tempted, I'm halfway walking out to go do the thing, take the bins, the rubbish in. You haven't done it yet. So you, it has to fully be done. And for those who don't know, so Jesse just mentioned the Dew app. It's D-U-E. It's iOS only. And why we like this app is because it has a nag alarm. It's a reminder app. You set up your reminder and then if you don't attend to it, it will remind you again in five minutes or 10 minutes. I think you can set the interval. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. But it really nags you. And I, I need that because I, I will snooze it and I will... I don't know what the difference is between a nag and a snooze. I guess it just, I guess the interval and you get all the notifications again. I don't know. Yeah, it's I think it's, app. I think the yeah. thing that sets do apart is that interval thing. So you can mm, set it so it's a one minute interval. So if it's something that's extremely timely, like you need to leave the house for a thing, you can have it where it's every minute you're getting like another notification oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. do the five minute thing or whatever it is. But yeah, anyway, it, it's a great app. Highly recommend it if you have a, if you mm -hmm, have an iPhone, mm -hmm. which you should, because iPhones are awesome. But anyway. Oh no, we're not going to get into this. <laughs> we're not going to get into this debate. I'm like, I, I use need Android. To download that one. <laughs> I use Android and iPhone, but do you on my iPhone? Izzy, do you use any apps or do you have any? Uh, do you have any systems for your time management? Yeah, there's. I guess I would say three things that I use fairly consistently. One of them is I have to give a shout out to Llama Life because oh, <laughs> I was trying not to. I, yeah. <laughs> I know it's not self-promotion, but I will say as a daily user of the break it down tool, that is the one thing that keeps me from freaking out about the stuff that I need to do. That's something that's been extremely helpful for me. I have my days, like my predefined lists of by day defined mm -hmm. on Llama Life. So I just load my Monday list and it's there. My Tuesday and it's there. So that way I know exactly what needs to be done. There's no surprises. Another thing that I do, especially for my creativity times, because I highly value creativity in just my daily life, I like to time box, like mm -hmm. creative sandbox is what I call it, time where I just, I'll block off two hours on a Thursday night and I'll just do something. I don't even define what that something is, but I allow myself the space to explore what my interest is at that particular moment of time. So I'll set a two hour block where I just dig in and make something, which is pretty fun and cool. A lot of really good ideas have come from those creative sandbox times. And then the Love third that. thing, yeah, yeah it's really fun. And as a, as adults, like neurodivergent adults, especially, they talk a lot about like how we've lost contact with our inner child and things like that. Like the idea of playing in a sandbox is exciting and fun. So like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. giving ourselves the time and space to do that, to be creative, to be fun. It may be silly. Like I'm designing memes for a t-shirt or something, or maybe it's something work related that I'm really into, or I really want to deep dive onto voter registration in the state of Texas. Like I will give myself a space to do that. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoy my creative sandbox time. I love and then that. The, the last yeah. thing is actually on the other spectrum of time where I have to get whatever it is that needs to be done. I need to do it right now, this second. So I'll give myself two minutes to be like, I have to sign this form for my kid before he jumps on the bus without whatever. I will set a two minute timer and I will run and do what I need to do. Right. Yeah. Or I forgot to make lunches that night and the kid is telling me right before the bus drives up, then I throw something together or I put together a plan to do something later. It's those two minute timers can really save me when I inevitably forget <laughs> to <This>? do things. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is really interesting because so, so you're talking about the concept of time boxing. So for those who don't know, time boxing is just like 
you you set a particular amount of time to do something. It doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., but it's more, in my head, it's more, I'm going to do this for one hour or two hours. You can use both. You can use like absolute time, like nine till 10, Mm -hmm. or you can just go for two hours or Izzy said like three hours for this sandbox creative time. And then you focus on just doing that in that time. So you're being very purposeful with how you spend that time box. But what I think is super interesting about what you said is you're using time boxing in two ways. You've got like your super urgent (laughs) two minutes, slightly like panicking, but not, Mm -hmm. you're creating some urgency to do it. And I see a lot of ADHD is doing that, uh, myself included. I have a lot of small timers, but what I find interesting is that you're also using it for the massive time block, this creative time. And I don't see people doing that as much, but you're still being very intentional about that time. So you're still Mm -hmm. defining and being purposeful, like what you're doing. I'm being creative. What I do within that could vary, but I am carving out this time for that. And I love that. I'm going to start doing that a bit more because yeah, I feel like I need a bit more creativity stuff as well. Sometimes you get caught up in daily life and that that seems to be the first thing to go for me is that creative time. Yeah, it's there, that's something to be said about brains like ours. It, when we get so stuck in the routines, as helpful as they may be, they can be reinforcing this very mundane boring, (laughs) non-dopamine-giving scenarios day in and day out. So Mm -hmm. with the idea of giving ourselves the time and the space to be free, to create, to ideate, Mm -hmm. to bounce ideas off of other people, to be funny, to be silly, and just exist in a way that starts piquing your creativity, then it makes the day-to-day life a little bit less drudgery, right? It's not so terrible, right? Because you have something to look forward to. You know that at the end of whatever week of of mundane work, you're like, I'm going to dive into the sandbox and we're going to have a blast (laughs) doing this, right? It's like the idea of delayed gratification for Mm. you're working hard and then you're like, okay, I I deserve this. Mm -hmm, Just like you mm -hmm. deserve taking care of yourself and bubble baths and that double chocolate ice cream, whatever, <laughs> like that's great, but throw on a really cool session with chat GPT, deep diving into something and then pull up a plan or a mind map and just see what happens. It could be mm-hmm. something really cool. Yeah. I I really love this. I think that's awesome. <laughs> it's actually something I've been toying with diving into more. I bought a domain a few months ago because I was uh, going down this rabbit trail (laughs) of basically calling it Project SideQuest because I feel like sometimes I can get too focused on what that main quest is and then I'm not get I it's I lose that fulfillment because I'm just like Mm -hmm. not getting to do that kind of exploration and trying out all of these like side things that aren't necessarily, I don't know, productive or whatever. It's not the sort of thing that like gets me further in life or whatever thing that might be, but it's fun. Like things that like there's certain movies that I wish I'd seen. And that would be something if I had a dedicated time, there's a lot of classics and like, I love film, but there's certain films I've like, I've never seen the Godfather or the sequel. And those are huge movies that I feel it's like embarrassing for me for someone who love film. And I feel like that's like almost on the little shame pile of I want to have watched that, but I never have time to do it. But if I had this some sort of dedicated side quest time or sandbox time or whatever you want to call it, (laughs) that would give me the justification. What's you that? Can totally, you can totally tell Jesse's a gamer. I got my main quest and I got my side quests. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to say I was a gamer because I said stack of shame. People like gamers will buy lots of games and then not get to play them. Oh, and so okay. it's like the stack of shame. Stack of like shame. Games you haven't gotten to yet. But anyway. <laughs> Well, I have a few. Yeah, every no, I'm not a huge gamer, but I got a few games on Steam, and Steam games always go on sales. So I got like a few that uh, yeah. like I want to play there, and I just haven't. 
I'll probably never get around to it. I don't have much time, but that's your stack of shame. It's the <laughs> Steam sale. Level. That's what really gets you. It's yeah, a because very... yeah, you, you get you. this for five bucks. Yeah. You're getting it. Add to the list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my stack of shame is very much related to my creative sandbox in that I have probably nine unfinished manuscripts for books. I have mm. uh, <laughs> poetry anthologies that I've put together that are sitting there in pencil and paper notebooks. I have business ideas that have they're stacked in this bookshelf right next to me. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's there. But the thing is a lot of times the the purpose of something like a creative sandbox is to get it out, right? Mm-hmm. It's to just mm-hmm. get it out. It may not turn into something fruitful, something that makes money. So, you know, whatever. It's, that's the capitalism talking. That what <laughs> right. imp- mm-hmm. what's important is the enrichment that it brings you as a human. <laughs> oh my right? God. Because I love this. Yeah. That's, that's the point of a creative sandbox time is you express yourself because that's what humans do. We express ourselves. We need to have outlets to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. Art, music, theater would not exist without creative sandbox time. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much more to it. And for each person to understand that valuing that time in creativity is it's just as important as having your routines in the morning and making mm-hmm. sure that you're you've got good hygiene and you're taking care of your car let your brain expand and, and be free a little i love this so <laughs> much even when jesse when you were talking before and you were saying like oh there's all these movies i want to watch all these things i want to look into and they might never become anything it's so our rabbit hole kind of brain like we want to go down rabbit holes there's a reason why we're looking for stuff because it's interesting and it gives you some dopamine because you're learning something that's interesting and you want to find out more and i think so many times we, we're always trying to go against our brain oh, don't do that don't do that don't go and check that out don't have 300 browser tabs open but you know what i think what we're saying is maybe carve out some time to do that because that's also a form of creativity that's something that you mm-hmm. want to do it gives you some joy and Unfortunately, there's a lot of guilt associated with it because we do go down those rabbit holes when we're not supposed to. Maybe we're supposed to be at work and we're doing stuff and we go down a rabbit hole. But if we actually carved out some time to do it, then there's no guilt because we intended to do that and we let our brain explore and be creative. And I love what you said, Izzy, about, okay, maybe it doesn't lead to something, but it served a purpose. In that moment, it served a purpose to get it out and you probably enjoyed it when you were looking into stuff and learning and then okay maybe it doesn't become anything now but you spent the time and you did that and now you've got all these ideas for later if you ever want to do something and same with your domain (laughs) jesse how many domains have you got i've got oh Oh. i cut down on mine but yeah I'm sure I have more than you. I, it, you, you it's got to be over 100. It's got to oh, be over yeah, yeah, 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a lot more than me. I think I have 25. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys yeah. both beat me, actually. I don't have that many. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm addicted. It's no good. <laughs> so we're talking a bit about the the side project stuff and like the shame. And I feel like that keeps coming up in a lot of our the oh, episodes yeah. where we're talking about how much there's just Every episode, I think. this like having grown up with ADHD, this just like shame that's cloud or whatever that's above and related with everything we're going through. And I think that's one of the interesting things is maybe not so much that we're not doing some of these side project things, but that we're feeling bad every time we do because Mm -hmm. we're not having this dedicated time. And I think that really maybe is some of the big unlock here of, Mm -hmm. hey, I can do this thing that I want to do and not have to feel bad about it. I don't have to like carry this weight of the shame that I feel like because it's not a productive thing that somehow that means it's shameful. And that's not the case. It's just we have this long history of learned shame of learned behavior to think that this is a shameful thing. And we just really need to unlearn that somehow and shed that. And I I love this idea of this scheduled time that really just gives me freedom of I can do whatever I want with this time. This can be that I'm going to spend two hours and just play the, some silly new video game that came out, or I'm going to watch this movie that I've wanted to do for a long time, or I'm going to do some fun. Maybe I've really wanted to do like watercolor sketches or whatever it is for a while. And I can take this dedicated time mm-hmm. and do that thing that feels quote unquote, a waste of time, even though mm-hmm. it's not, it just feels like it yeah. because I for so long felt bad about any of these sort of things that aren't what other people think I'm supposed to do or or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And some people might be hearing this and going, I don't have the time to do this, 
But then let's have a think about all the time we spend procrastinating on things that we don't want to do. What if we just turn that procrastination time into this sandbox creative time? Because I don't know about you guys, but like I have this really bad like waiting mode thing where, and I know a lot of ADHDs have waiting mode where I've got something in the afternoon and I can't do anything else because I'm waiting for that and I'm really worried I'm going to miss it. And it's purely for me a time thing. I'm just so worried I'm going to miss it. So I keep checking the time and my brains can't do anything else. I'm just occupied with that. So instead of procrastinating on doing other stuff and being in this waiting mode, maybe I'll just go, hey, let me do my creative time or something. Maybe that's not a good example because I'd still be thinking about the thing that I might miss. But maybe it's procrastinating on other small things that I just don't want to do. Why can't I turn that time into something else, like a creative thing? Yeah, I think part of it also is if you do decide to do some creativity during your waiting mode, really Mm. utilizing your alarms and your reminders. (laughs) Once you get hit flow and you're like really in there and hyper focusing, Mm -hmm. the time can really slip away. But it's also really good exercise for our brain muscle doing something that we want to do. (laughs) It, It may just require a shift in how we think about waiting mode and stuff like that to take advantage of that time with a more mm-hmm. positive, positively associated activity. And I did some of that in, in between my morning meetings and this event this evening. I, I was in waiting mode, like I mentioned before, waiting like two and a half hours from the time my kids came home from school. But I was able to do a deep dive. So I I had, I have had an idea that I've wanted to research about the future of social media, right? What is it going to look like? So I spent some time just deep diving, learning everything that I could about what people love about certain platforms, what people hate about platforms what things they value, what things they don't value as much. So I gave myself the time and space to really deep dive into that, which was great because I had been having those questions in my head for so long. It's I'm waiting, I might as well just give myself a little space to do this. And of course, we know with ChatGBT, everything is saved. So every question I've ever asked ChatGPT is still there. And that's like mm-hmm. a gold mine for me. I just love mm-hmm. looking back and reading. I was learning about Hawaiian language two weeks ago and like how family and neurodivergence is viewed in, in Hawaiian culture and all kinds of stuff. I just, you know, anything that piques my interest, I will start deep diving and and having fun with. So that's an opportunity for us to be able to use the waiting mode to our advantage. I know it's difficult in waiting mode when we don't have anything to do in those times, like the restlessness, the frustration, the agitation, the constantly checking our times, like wringing our hands. Did we remember to eat? I don't know. There's <laughs> the, the anxiety that goes along with something like that can really eat at us. Um, if we give our brains a little bit of food during that time, give them a little creativity, express themselves, learn something, read something, listen to something, watch something, then we can utilize that time to our mm-hmm. advantage. So. I'll be quiet now because I've been talking about <laughs> <laughs> No, that's great. I love that. Uh, a minute ago, we were talking about the worrying that you're going to forget about the thing. And mm-hmm. I was reminded of an app that I haven't actually tried it yet. So this isn't like a direct recommendation because I haven't tried it. <laughs> but there's an app called In Your Face, which is at like In Your Face. It's love a Mac it. only app. But the way it basically it's supposed to connect with your calendar. So mm-hmm. when you have scheduled meeting events, it will literally fill the entire screen with the <laughs> notification so that you don't, because I do this all the time. I'll see the, oh yeah, I've got that event in five minutes. I'll even have it, the alarm pop up to say, oh, it's in two minutes. Okay. And then mm-hmm. two minutes goes by and I totally forget about it. So this will like the idea of the app, it just takes over the full screen and then there's a one click to join the meeting. So I'm going to install awesome. it if, as soon as we get off this call Me to uh, see if that works Me out. Too. <laughs> 
Yes, because that's a perfect way to break out of the creative sandbox. If you're playing、mm-hmm. and having a great time, like you, you're not looking at the top. <laughs> I know I'm not. <laughs>、yeah. right. So、yep. something like that to really like wake or shake you and be like, hey. <laughs> Especially mm-hmm, if, if mm-hmm. it's a cat telling me, if it's a cat, then that's even better.、It、pops in the screen, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Or a llama. Maybe, maybe I should build llama. this into、idea. llama life. Maybe、yeah. I should make this take over、oh、the screen. God, that'd be so cute. <laughs>、um, yeah, you already just... have the llama like popping in on the website and stuff, and <laughs>、yeah, you have that. That'd、idea. be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I already have that. Yeah, exactly. In your face. The other. The other、okay. thing while we we're talking, then I was just thinking. I think this is Mac only on desktop, but talking about in your being in your face, like I use the sticky notes on the Mac. It's just like a it's like a post-it note, but a digital version. And the difference between that and like a notepad is the sticky note like stays on top of everything else that you're doing. So I could be working on I don't know coding or whatever or writing a something and. But I can put this note on top of it, and it never goes behind any window, and so it's、mm-hmm. in my face. And so if I have something important, I chuck it on that sticky note. And there's、nice. no alarm, there's no reminder, but it's on my screen, and it's taken up a portion of my screen, and it never gets blocked. And I'm like, yep. Right. This, so this is this is officially the Apple only episode because we're all、oh, yeah. <laughs> iPhone and、uh, Mac recommendations. Well, well, I'm sure there's Windows well, versions of the. Uh, sticky note as well. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I use both Android and iOS, and there is so Android doesn't have that Do app that we mentioned before, but Android just improved on Android 15. Sorry, on Android 14, they just improved the alarms. So now now you can schedule alarms really easily in the future, which kind of sounds funny that you couldn't do that before, but you can do it now. So I'm like. I have so many alarms. When you go through my list, <laughs> it's even for like next week. Like if I know I'm going to do something next week, as soon as something's in my calendar to do, if I think I need an alarm for it, I try and just do it like straight away. And I'll just be nice, dictating、yeah. it. I don't want to say it because I might trigger everyone's assistant. But like the assistant on the phone, I'll go, "Yep, set an alarm for whatever." And it's a voice for me. It's all voice because it's fast, and then it'll、nice. do it. And I've got like that reassurance that yeah. Half an hour or whatever before the thing I have to do, I'll get an, an an alarm that has to be shut off, won't stop. I have to snooze it, but that's the equivalent I think on Android right now. That's what I use. I don't know if anyone else knows any apps. Like when we post this podcast on social, we can drop it in the comments, and maybe we can build up a list or something. <laughs>、mm-hmm. Actually, on that note, it might be a good time to wrap up. This episode is about time management, and ironically, we've gone over on time. But that's the way it is. Izzy, thank you so much for being、yeah. on the show. I love this concept that you talked about. This really big idea of just like scheduling this creative time. I'm really going to try and do it. it. It sounds simple, but I think it's hard for us to do. And just being、yeah. more aware that is something that we can do, and not to fight against our brains and let us release stuff. And that's got a purpose in itself. That's my big takeaway from today. I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, thank you for. Being on the show, and if people want to find you on social media, where can they go? Yeah, I am on Instagram. I'm on Threads. You can also visit my website. I have a blog that I, at least on that website, that I haven't really updated a whole lot. But if you want to check out my really funky, cool website, it's www.ladnerupicante.com. And it's a lot of fun. It's a glimpse into my stuck in the early two thousands spicy brain. Take a peek. <laughs> I think、mm-hmm. you'll enjoy、yeah. it. And、so. we'll put all these. We'll put all the links in the show notes as well. Yeah. Amazing. And Jesse, where can people find you? Yeah, I also wanted to thank you for being on the show. Love this conversation. I feel like so many strategies and things we talk about that help ADHDers feel so simple. But that the framing of something really can make、mm-hmm. a really huge、yeah. difference, and、mm-hmm. so I really love that.、Mm-hmm. If you want to follow me, I'm ADHD Jesse on all of the platforms, and then extrafocus.com has my newsletter, and that and my book is extrafocusbook.com or anywhere books are sold. And how about、mm-hmm. you, Marie? Where can people follow you? So I'm on Three Hour Coffee at Twitter. That's spelled out Three Hour and Coffee. And of course, Llama Life. So Llama Life is a time boxing app. Some of the stuff that we talked about today, you can very easily do on Llama Life. So you can make a list and set timers. You can find Llama Life on the app stores, Android and iOS, and also web. 
And on Twitter, because you got that, oh, and you on got Twitter. that username. <laughs> <laughs> at, yeah. at Llama Life on Twitter. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Great. Awesome. Thanks for being here, Izzy. This is great. Yeah, I had a fun time. Thank you. Yeah.